Right now, the Boston Bruins are the best team in hockey. Starting off the year with an insane 33-5-4 record, they're the second fastest team to hit the 30 win mark in NHL history. They've been taking the entire league by storm, and the sky's the limit in terms of what they can do during the second half of the season. Since the Bruins are off to such a historic start, I wanted to take a look back at the NHL team who had the worst historic start in NHL history. And while researching this video, Video, I thought I easily found my team. The 1992-93 season saw the league introduce two new teams, the San Jose Sharks and the Ottawa Senators. The Senators actually used to be an NHL team, but they'd relocate to St. Louis and become the Eagles in 1931. Their return to the NHL was highly anticipated, so the new management didn't want to disappoint. But unfortunately for them, the early revamped Ottawa Senators were a complete disaster. To start, during the expansion draft, Senators just General Manager Mel Bridgman would infamously forget to charge his laptop, causing him to select a player that was already taken three separate times, and the players he did manage to select provided little to no impact, as within three years, almost every player who was taken wouldn't even be on the team. Despite the expansion draft hiccups, many were still excited and were hoping the team could at least be competitive, and during their inaugural home opener, it looked as if that would be the case. It's showtime! Jody Hollis, 17, going back with Turgeon. Into the corner, in the Canadian zone. Turgeon is there, doesn't get a pass. Into the corner, Brady fed it back. Shaw to Brady again. Brady looks back to Shaw. Shaw to the other side. The Kyber side of the net pass. Ottawa took down one of the most historic franchises in NHL history, winning their first game in their return to the league. There was optimism after the victory, optimism that would quickly become shattered, as after that win, the Senators would go on one of the worst losing streaks I've ever seen. After starting the year 1-0-0, the Sens would lose slash tie the next 22 games not getting their next win until November 25th against the New Jersey Devils. Standing with a 2-20-1 record, Ottawa was on record pace to become one of the worst teams of all time. And come the end of the 92-93 season, they were. The Sens would only win 8 more games after the 25th, finishing the season with a 10-70-4 record and some of the worst statistics in NHL history. They would finish dead last in goals scored with 2 105 and second to last in goals against and despite having one of the easiest schedules in the league they would post a 0.143 point percentage ironically tying their expansion brother San Jose Sharks, who also had an extremely terrible season. How was Ottawa rewarded for their failures? With the number one pick that would be used to select Alexander Daig, who would go on to become one of the biggest busts of all time. Now, if you noticed, this Sens team, despite their horrible season, is actually not the worst of all time. As to be the worst, you need to fail and own every negative category. This is how I found the actual most embarrassing team. As believe it or not, there's a team who had a point percentage even lower than 143, and they too also happened to be an expansion team. About two years ago, I made an entire video dedicated to the 74-75 Washington Capitals, but while doing so, I failed to look at the team's overall analytics and historically low statistics. That year, the Capitals would post an abysmal record of 8-67-5, the worst record in NHL history. Their backup goaltender, Michael Bellhumor, wouldn't even record a single win going 0-24-3, and the team went through three 
head coaches, including one, Jim Anderson, who quit on the team after getting stomach ulcers due to stress. The Capitals' number one pick that year was Greg Jolly, who posted one of the worst plus minuses in NHL history with a minus 69, a not so nice total that actually was matched by his teammate Jack Lynch. Funny enough, when looking up the worst plus minus online, four of the top five were all members of the 75 Capitals, with Jolly's minus 69 getting beaten by teammate Bill Michelson, who had a minus 82. The Capitals finished dead last in goals for and goals against, scoring just 181 goals and giving up 446, and their 21 points helped Washington finish the year with a .131 point percentage, the worst point percentage in NHL history. So, after all this failure, Washington had to be rewarded, right? Well, on June 3rd, 1975, after posting the worst record in NHL history, they decided to trade the first overall pick to the Stanley Cup champion Philadelphia Flyers for Bill Clement, Don McLean, and the 18th pick. Clement would go on to be named the captain of the Capitals, but only lasted one year in DC. McLean would only play nine games for the Capitals, and the Flyers would use the number one pick on, get this, Mel Bridgman, the general manager of the 92-93 Ottawa Senators. Everyone expected the Ottawa Senators to be a bad hockey club, but no one pictured going all season without a win on the road. It's not fun losing on the road all the time, obviously, and uh, it's something that we've, we've tried to accomplish a win, but uh, we just... Actually, there's been times where we just haven't got uh, the breaks, and I think we proved that the other night in Montreal. 